Hello and welcome to Crispresso. Crispresso is a computational tool that allows for the quick and easy analysis of CRISPR genome editing experiments from deep sequencing data. This video will guide you through using the Crispresso web tool to analyze your data. First, open any internet browser and type crispresso.rocks into the search bar. This will bring you to the Crispresso homepage. Here you will notice two headings. The first are the required parameters. And if you scroll down, you'll find the second heading, which is optional parameters. Let's start with the required parameters. In order to run Crispresso, you minimally need three things. The first is to select the type of sequencing data you have, either paired end or single end reads. The second is to upload your sequencing data in FASTQ format. And third, you must enter the reference sequence for your amplicon of interest. As an example, we will use sample data provided on the Crispresso website, which can be found by clicking on the Help button at the top of the Crispresso homepage. As you can see, here's the Help button. This sample data is paired end sequencing data using the Cas9 nuclease to produce a spectrum of insertions and deletions, or indel mutations. Therefore, I have selected the paired end reads option. If the paired end reads option is selected, you should have two fields to input FASTQ files, while you should have only one field if you have selected the single end reads option. Now I will upload both sequencing files. Finally, I will copy and paste the reference amplicon into the field below. Now, if you don't want to adjust any of the optional parameters, you can simply click the Submit button found at the bottom of the home page to begin the analysis. The analysis will appear in your window once it is complete. In order to ensure Crispresso analyzes your data in the best possible way, there are several optional parameters that can be adjusted to fit your needs. So let's go through each of these optional parameters one by one. The first option, under the sample name heading, allows for the addition of a suffix to appear on the file names of the output analysis files. As an example, we will enter the suffix test data. The second option in the list is expected HDR amplicon sequence. If the data to be analyzed was derived from an experiment using a donor repair template for homology directed repair, or HDR for short, then you have the option to input the sequence of the expected HDR amplicon. This sequence is necessary for Crispresso to be able to identify successful HDR events within the sequencing data. The third option, Sequence Homology for an HDR Occurrence, is a related option. This allows for the ability to set a threshold for sequence homology for Crispresso to count instances of successful HDR. This option allows for optimal analysis due to technical artifacts present in the sequencing data, such as sequencing errors or single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, in the cells used in the experiment. Therefore, if you have a read that exhibits successful HDR but has a SNP or sequencing error within the amplicon, you can lower the sequence homology setting in order to allow Crispresso to count the read as a successful HDR event. We would suggest initially setting this to 100% and then reviewing the data, 
but then relaxing this parameter as appropriate. The fourth optional parameter is to enter the guide RNA sequence. If the guide RNA sequence is entered, then the position of the guide RNA and the cleavage position will be indicated on the output analysis files. If multiple guide RNAs are used in the experiment, they can all be entered in this field separated by commas. The fifth optional parameter allows for creation of a window surrounding the cleavage position as determined by the provided guide RNA sequence for Crespresso to analyze for indels. Sequencing artifacts and or SNPs can lead to false positives and negatives in the quantification of indels and HDR occurrences. Therefore, you can choose to create a window around the predicted double strand break site of the nuclease used in the experiment. This can help limit non-editing based alterations in an individual read from being inappropriately quantified in Crespresso's analysis. The sixth optional parameter is to provide coding sequence. Entering coding sequence allows Crespresso to quantify frame shift versus in-frame mutations present in the sequencing data. In order to perform this analysis, the coding sequence must be entered. The sequence must be a subset of the reference amplicon that was entered in the required parameters section above. If the reference amplicon contains multiple exons, they can be entered into the same field separated by commas. The seventh and eighth optional parameters provide two options to filter reads according to sequencing data quality. The first is for filtering based on minimum average read quality and the second is filtering based on minimum single base pair quality, both using the FRED33 scale, which provides a quality score for deep sequencing data. The default for Crespresso is no filtering. However, a reasonable value for this parameter is greater than 30. The final optional parameter is indicating the adapters used for deep sequencing. If the uploaded data has already had the associated adapters trimmed, then simply select No Trimming. However, if the adapters have not been trimmed, then select the adapters used in the experiment and Crespresso will trim the adapter sequences for you. Finally, you can click the Submit button at the bottom of the screen. Clicking the Submit button will allow Crespresso analysis to begin. If an email address is entered in the field directly above the Submit button, then you will receive an email when the Crespresso analysis results are ready. If this field is empty, you will need to leave your internet browser open to view your results. When you are planning to process your data, we recommend including a non-edited control in all experiments. This helps to empirically determine sequence quality and to ensure Crespresso does not overcall mutations, for example, due to sequencing errors or polymorphisms in the amplicons relative to the reference sequence. Once Crespresso has finished processing the data, you will see figures generated based on the analysis. Below each figure includes a description of the data presented in that figure. You can save the files individually or you can simply click download this report at the bottom of the page which will download all the analysis files. This concludes the tutorial of the Crespresso web tool.
A set of command line utilities, including Crespresso, can also be downloaded via the link at the bottom of the page. The command line version offers several advantages. The first advantage is that command line Crespresso allows for analysis of sequencing data of any file size, while the web page is limited to files up to 75 megabytes. In addition, the command line version of Crespresso includes more user options, such as the ability to specify parameters to adapt this analysis to different editing systems that differ in their double strand break position relative to their associated protospacer adjacent motif, or PAM sequence, such as the CPF1 nuclease. Other command line utilities are also available for download that allow users to analyze data from pooled CRISPR experiments, or whole genome sequencing. These features are only available in command line versions. For further help and troubleshooting, click on the Help button at the top of the Crespresso homepage. Good luck and happy editing from everyone here at Crespresso.